I'm Buck from uh, SoCal Motorcycle Services here in, I normally would say sunny San Diego, but we're kind of having a bit of a rainstorm today, uh, remnants of Hurricane Hillary. So I figured it'd be a good time to make a video. Uh, today's video is going to be about tools, um, specifically tools that you probably haven't heard of, but you need. You don't even know you need them, but as soon as you use them, you can't live without them. Uh, I've been using these five tools every day at my shop for at least the last 10 years. Um, everybody wonders how come professionals can get jobs done quicker and easier. It's because we have the right tools. Um, I every tool I'm going to show you today I've owned literally for 10 years use them every day I've never had them wear out or break uh, so I highly recommend the brands uh, I'll go over the brands when I give you the list of five uh, I could do about four of these videos if you guys are interested I will go into some more tools but these are the ones that I grab every single day. Uh, they never failed me and they let me complete jobs much quicker, much easier than if I didn't have them. So uh, check out the video. Um, they're all affordable. Uh, I don't get paid by the companies but I'm going to tell you which brands they are and why I like them. So, watch to the end because uh, number one on the list, you absolutely need. Uh, thanks again. I'll uh, talk to you after. The number five tool that I use every day is called a battery tender. A battery tender is a maintainer. Um, the biggest problem we have at or most motorcycle shops have is weak or dead batteries. Uh, motorcycle batteries are small. They don't last very long. You're doing really well if you get three years out of a motorcycle battery. It's because most people don't ride their bikes every day. They let them sit, they drain, they have to jump the bike, whatever. Uh, the battery tender is the one that we use. This is a dual battery tender so you can charge two bikes at the same time. Uh, what it does is um, it has th this is the ends that it uses. Now you can either plug it into a pigtail that we call which is a uh, a, a cord that we um, a cord that is attached to your battery and is located in a place where you don't have to take your seat off you don't have to get to your battery you can plug your bike in every night when it's parked in a garage uh, they all battery tenders come with the pigtail which attaches to your battery and they also come with the alligator clips that you can use uh, so that you can use them uh, if your bike doesn't have a pigtail you can also use them on cars but it will take a very long time to charge uh, it's the this one's rated at 0.75 amps you don't really want to overwhelm your battery with high amperage when you're charging it motorcycle batteries are much more fragile than car batteries they take less power so you want something around 1 to, to 0.75 amps to charge it you plug it in uh, when it's plugged in it'll tell you if the battery is charging or if it's fully charged. Um, you can plug in a bike indefinitely with, with these because it's automatic. It'll shut itself off when your battery is charged and send a trickle charge whenever it needs it so you'll be ready to ride uh, whenever you want. Not that dreaded go to the garage, put on your gear, turn on the key, and you hear the click, click, click when you uh, press a start button on your bike. So, very important. 
you need a battery tender. Uh, the fourth most important tool that you will need on a bike is a very good, accurate tire pressure gauge. Uh, the pencil types that stick out the piece of plastic to tell you how much pressure is in your tires, they aren't very good or accurate. You want a dial gauge. Uh, it'll tell you what pressure it is, and you can also release pressure from your tire when you press this button, and it also resets it. Uh, checking tire pressures on the motorcycle is very important. Uh, first thing I do uh, when I get a bike in, I check tire pressures. I rarely have tires that are uh, that have the correct pressure. They're always low. The bike feels slow and rides like a truck, but since they bleed down over time, you don't really notice it. Uh, that's a good reason to take a bike to a shop, a professional shop every now and then. You get a, uh, a fresh opinion on how your bike is riding. So this is a Cruise Tools brand. Uh, I am very, very happy with uh, Cruise Tools. Uh, like I said, I bought all of these tools. This gauge is about 15 years old. And it just is perfect. Uh, I've never had a problem. Uh, very accurate and cheap. I believe this is under $30. Uh, so pick yourself up a really good tire pressure gauge. Okay, the number three tool that I use almost every day is this. Now you're saying to yourself, oh, that's the Phillips head screwdriver. Well, yes it is. But most people have a size that's close to this which is number two Phillips most people try to use that and they're stripping Phillips head screws uh, mainly the uh, screws on your brake master cylinder everybody strips those when they use a regular number two screwdriver uh, this is called a JIS Phillips JIS stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. Japanese Industrial Standard is very different from a number two. You think the number two fits, but it doesn't go in deep enough, and they strip them out. Uh, if you use a number two screwdriver, uh, say for cleaning a carburetor, Harley or American, uh, Harley or Japanese, excuse me, uh, you're going to strip out the, the, the screws and not be able to get them out. They are JIS. Now, how do you know it's a JIS screw when you're looking at it? Well, here's a picture of the head of a Phillips head screw. You see the X is where the screwdriver fits, and then between two of the lines you'll see a dot. If the screw has that dot, it's a JIS, which is Japanese Industrial Standard Screwdriver. You have to use a JIS bit or you'll just strip it. If you use the Japanese industrial standard screwdriver it'll fit perfectly you'll see a, and you can order a tip like this this is a removable one that I use and you can get a tip for a dollar on Amazon or eBay doesn't really matter and you'll see how it's pointier than a regular number two Phillips so JIS screwdriver bit get one uh, I've been using this one forever. The brand doesn't really matter on these because you're not using too much torque. So just go online, grab a couple of these. Your uh, stripping Phillips screw headache will go away. Okay, this is number two most used tool at my shop. Uh, these are called T-handles. And I have two. One that takes three eighths inch sockets. One that takes quarter inch sockets. They make your life so much easier. 
Uh, you don't have to ratchet back and forth with the ratchet. Uh, there are definitely times when you need a ratchet, but most of the times on motorcycles, you just put it in there, break the uh, initial torque, and then just spin them loose. It makes disassembling and assembling a bike so much faster. That's why all of the major race teams use them. Um, and they can be used for Japanese or uh, SAE bikes. SAE is uh, the standard American sizes in inches. Uh, but get these. These are amazing. I do not know what I would do. Uh, these are from Motion Pro. And uh, they cost less than $10 a piece. I don't know. I bought them so long ago, but... They never break, never wore out, had never had a problem with them. Makes your life so much easier. Okay, finally we're at the number one. This tool I use all the time. I know you're getting sick of me saying it, but I use these all the time. Okay, everybody knows what an Allen wrench is, right? That's the L looking keys like this. Um, don't use these most of the time. Uh, the problem with these is they're slow and they're awkward. Uh, they fit, but they slip. Uh, don't throw these away. I'll tell you in a minute why these are important. But don't just use these Allens. This is what you're going to want to use. We have SAE set, metric set, and Torx bits, the star-like bits. Use these whenever you are working on removing a uh, hex head fastener. I mean, you would not believe. Paired up with the T-handle and things go so much easier. Slip it on. They fit correctly. Uh, you, you don't strip things. And it's just, you can get torque on them. You can really loosen them. Just, if I didn't have these, my life would be miserable. Use these all the time. Now, if you have a Japanese bike or a European bike, you only need the metrics. But Harleys need all three. Well, Japanese bikes also require the Torx bits. So get the Torx bits. But Harleys, they require all three. You'll find metric screws, you'll find SAE screws, and you'll find Torx bits, or Torx screws. Uh, you can't even change the oil on a Harley without having uh, a good set of Allen hex kit uh, keys. So use these. Get them. They're about $30 a set. And I put these through the ringer. These are cruise tools. And I uh, just, they never break. Uh, they are so good. And on for Harleys, you definitely need this one, size T27. Very important one. Uh, most people, there's a, T, there's a couple T27s on Harleys that people strip all the time because they use the T25s and they think, you think they fit, but they don't. Also, when you're dealing with hex screws, um, make sure you have the actual right size. A lot of people think they fit and they don't. And there are places where, like for example, you can use a quarter inch on a six millimeter or the other way around. They don't fit if you're tempted to use them, but you'll strip. So make sure you use the proper size tool for your bolts or you'll just be stripping them. And then I, I mentioned again how I don't use the, the L keys, but 
don't throw them away because this set of L Allen wrenches I use are very special. They're normal when you look at them here, but the long ends have balls on them. They're ball-ended hexes. So if you cannot get to one straight on, you can use the ball to tighten it up. And then there's some times when you just have to use the L because you have, you're limited by space. So use these, but only when you have to. The, uh, these, the 3 8 inch ones, uh, sockets are so much better. You use them once and you'll never go back. Paired with the T-handle, you can strip a bike down super fast. You save tons of time and you don't strip anything. Thank you. Thanks again for watching my videos. I hope you uh, like the information I gave you on these tools that you really should be using. Um, any questions, just post them down in the comments. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more videos on tools that uh, you probably don't know you need and make life working in a motorcycle a lot easier. Like I said in the intro, uh, I could think of about 15 more tools that I could use that you absolutely definitely, that you absolutely need to work on your motorcycle like a professional. Uh, and most of them are very inexpensive. Uh, so hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.